Hello guys, um, welcome to Cloud Buy. In today's session, I am going to discuss how to provision a new Oracle Business Suite installations on a single node on uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructures. And also, I'll uh, discuss in the uh, subsequent video that uh, how to install, uh, how to take the backups uh, using this uh, Oracle Cloud backup module. Okay and uh, that will be required whenever if you do the uh, any kind of migrations from your on-premise uh, Oracle business way to the Oracle cloud itself uh, using a lift uh, lift and shift method so these backups is important whenever you are doing the actual migrations okay so let's proceed um, so this is the uh, master node I am going to discuss this uh, provisioning a new Oracle business suite installations on a single node it quite straightforward okay so I'll be uh, using this particular master node uh, where uh, I'll be uh, installing I'll be using a particular AMI this uh, uh, Oracle AMI which already have this particular e-business source and I'll be running some post steps and then uh, that's it and the next steps uh, next uh, video i'll be installing this you know oracle um, cloud backup tool and we'll be taking a backup okay so here is my uh, oci console i'll be uh, i am already in the compute instance so i'll be creating the instance okay so you know uh, i already have the my vcn and uh, security is everything is configured so i am creating my vcn and uh, maybe i can use any of them things maybe i'll create this vcn one or ability one two now coming to i have to choose a, a specific ami um, for workly business suit so i'll uh, click on the change image and i'll choose the oracle images because this is a oracle product compartment will be the same as the database so you can have your own compartment okay so i'll click next not here not in this list again click next here you can see there are a lot of uh, you know it's a demo so it's it's though it is free but you have to pay for the storage and all these things so there is a three thing is there 12 to 10 uh, 12 to 8 and 12 to 9 you can install any of the things i'll create uh, 12 to 9 okay so select images now for these things you need actually 16 gigs should be good you can try with the lesser uh, memory but i believe the 16 gig would be good okay um, next things about the networking you know the networking we have to uh, okay, let me create the bigger font i already having my uh, uh, public private key pairs so I already having a video about these things so if you don't know how to create it, these things uh, using the ssh keygen command this is quite simple so i already have my things i'll just copy and uh, public key and paste it here okay the next thing is about the boot volume this is important okay um, for this particular ami to work we need to have at least 375 gigs of space okay so otherwise this will won't work okay because if i'll try with this say 100 gigs you can see there is an error will come yeah uh, you can see that error message is clearly so that uh, minimum boot volume supported for this image is 375 gigs so i have to go for the 375 gigs and create it's very simple you have to just choose the whatever the necessary things now once this um, instance is up and running um, we'll be doing this our uh, post act uh, uh, post activity some of the uh, configuration steps we have to follow okay this is available so let me copy the public ip okay okay you can see that this is the host name okay let's follow the uh, document together so what it says is that <clears throat> you have to uh, log in to these things and you have to go to the root users so we'll just uh, go to the root users 
and first you have to update the repository okay it's updating now this is gonna take I believe at least a minute or two maybe less so I'll pause the video right now so I'll be uh, continuing once uh, it's done steps uh, you can see that it was update the host I tell you why it is important to update the host you know that there, there are a lot of uh, uh, scripts post scripts we will be using like starting the database starting the applications uh, and they will be using some you know uh, the host names as a you know as a apps kind of thing apps.example.com so now my you know the my host name is something else because I have I didn't change my host name at all so okay the easiest way to do that that you know we'll be using a script as oracle given that will you know change the host name that means it will create an entry to the etc host file and i'll i'll just show you that what it does if i open the script uh, so it is just end uh, put an entry and it will uh, do that okay and we'll discuss about these things so let's just run this script okay so it says it puts some qualified hostname entry for the apps.example.com so if i open that uh, etc host you can see that apps.example.com that is uh, the hostname should be apps now if i see that it it's, did, did, didn't do that if i'll just uh, re-logging and try to do that it's not so the best things we have to do that we have to reboot our system so that this comes to effect okay so we'll reboot our systems and uh, maybe after a minute after once we re-logging to our systems we can see that the the host name has changed okay so let's wait for a minute and we'll uh, re-logging i believe uh, we can re-logging now and uh, let's see the host name if it does affect yes it does change the apps so that uh, is kind of a prerequisites and by um, running this particular update host name scripts we have done it now see, we'll just go to the oracle log into the oracle because rest of the things we have to start to the oracle so it's already you know you can see that you know it's already uh, created this ami is already pre-installed everything is installed is uh, installed the oracle database is installed the, the two separate uh, file systems one is for patch one is one is for run one is for patch for the um oracle e-business source okay if you are familiar with the e-business source starting from oracle 12.2 is comes with the uh, two separate file system to reduce the for catering the online uh, patching okay so if i uh, create this you know open the uh, this startup scripts for the database you can see it startup is first start the oracle database cdb and the second thing is that it starts the listener okay now first here it is starts the listeners and it here it starts the database okay so it's quite straightforward So you can you can see that database is now starting so everything is preset you know it's having this uh, p file uh, sv file is all already there this is a pre-installed things so you can change whatever you want uh, but this is just for the demo purpose it's having the demo data the business source okay so the listeners listeners has started and uh, the listener name is ebs cdb and um, the database also started so if you can see that the listener is started it's called ebs cdb the next step is that i am going to run the application start up the applications so applications if you can see that uh, the scripts having everything so it will first uh, you know install the you uh, cater the environment files and then uh, it st starts the environment file this is the that should be the environment file for uh, source one fs1 
and what is the app space app space is something it will take the app space from here the ps files so I, if i know the app space it should be somewhere okay let me show you where the app space is there okay it should be somewhere here so right after this u01 installed directory this is the 19 uh, this is the oracle home directory this is the fs1 so uh, if you go for the fs1 okay now uh, this there is a ebs app ebs apps environment thing is that you can if you want to do it manually you can change this ebs apps environment for the app sites and then it will ask you this whether you want to go for the run on patch i'm not going anything because i'll be choosing the uh, I'm, I'm i'm doing it um, script way so the same thing is that you will run the start up the scripts so it will start everything but i'll just show you that what you have to do that if you want to set it manually for any kind of operations so this is gonna take a uh, maybe a minute or two to start everything like you know uh, concurrent uh, apache uh, then your uh, opmn then waycore wayfm everything it will start maybe one or two minutes so i'll come back once it's done and i'll uh, discuss about the uh, remaining steps start all is completed so normally it's taken the start all things from uh, um, admin scripts home this is the locations it's, it's take the start all so the start all things what you have to do that um, you have to um, provide uh, two level of passwords one is uh, apps passwords apps user log username logging and the passwords so if you see the uh, the script uh, it's also already having this the password things so that we can know that what is the password they use so they use the echo that is a, you can see that the echo the first echo is that they use the apps username first uh, input the second input the apps password that is also apps and the third input is the um, web logic password so that is the web logic password they set as a welcome one so they put it they first understood that you know from the script itself um, how which is the you know uh, um, uh, run home or the patch home normally this is the first time installation run home is as well as, as well as fs1 so if you'll do the cutover next time it will be fs2 okay so and then thereafter it will uh, do the start all, start all scripts from here the next steps um so as i said earlier so you can now since your things have started you can start up your run file systems which is current current file systems and uh, <coughs> so that is a uh, some of the steps like you have you have mentioned the enable the sysadmin users for something um, so you can set the sysadmin users passwords sysadmin is the main uh, uh, I can you can see that you know administrator user for the uh, applications level so you will do that it will ask for the sysadmin passwords user so whatever the passwords you want you can choose for that i'll try to choose a very simple one to see if it is allowed me you also check the log files so it is uh, it runs a fndc pass command fndc pass is the command for changing the apps passwords and other uh, sysadmin passwords and other level of you know application passwords okay so the, you can see that this is runs a fnd username the fndc pass command um, the guys if you work in the apps so you know the what is fndc pass so it says that it could uh, successfully change the username for the sysadmin okay the next thing is that uh, uh, there are a lot since it is a demo installation there are a lot of demo users for each and every module so you can enable the sysadmin scripts uh, you can enable the demo user scripts as well
similarly i don't i am not going to use them but you know let me set a password for them as well so it will be running a hell lot of scripts you know each demo user for each module i believe like ap argl uh, you know scms what about that you know oracle does have you know a lot of modules um, i don't know how many modules they have given here but i believe the lot of modules they have given okay so there are a lot of scripts so a uh, lot of log files so each log file caters to a particular user the next thing is that <coughs> configure the web entry uh, now the web entry means that this is since the application is having a front end web entry where you can uh, uh, how you can log in you can log in you know what should be the your web entry host name there should be a host names how you can log in you can either uh, uh, logging through the http or https what should be the your uh, um, which of the you know entries you should do that uh, you know to do that you have to also change some of the settings in your uh, um, i think security list so i'll also show you the what are the entries we need to show we need to change the security list you have to allow a uh, particular uh, uh, vcn level subnet level the security list the if you suppose if i'll go for the 8000 port so 8000 port should be allowed from the outsides maybe from your client look uh, client machines all something like that so i'm going to run these things so first it is asking for the web entry protocols now i can run the both the https and http if i'll do the https i have to uh, enable the ssl as well so for the simplicity i'll enable the http so what is the web sd host names so, say you can put any host names but there is a catch uh, the host name that you put you have to put these things in your uh, etc or host file cloudby.oktraining.com okay. i think that will be perfect okay and domain name uh i believe i have made mistakes because i want to put a cloudby on the domain name as training.com let me run again similar things and let me put as a cloud y training.com um, I'll put 80 8000 8000 uh, I believe this 8000 is a default uh, OSTDP port for the EBS so 80 is not 443 uh, could be the SSL port default but I'll put as a 8000 and the Oracle uh, seat should be same so it says so unfortunately I have to run again okay it's updating this uh, you know this it's updating the context file now uh, you can ask me what is the context file so this is for the uh, uh, the major or I believe the uh, primary configuration file it's having the multiple level of configuration files is there each component having its own configuration files okay let me put the apps user passwords it's running the something called auto config now uh, auto config is something of uh, you um, uh, uh, configure it's got it's run to configure the oracle uh, application environments it prim primarily takes the input as a you know context files also the uh, template files uh, as a uh, input so i'll be discussing a little bit about the context files and the these steps i know this is uh, beyond about this particular installation steps but i just want to discuss if you are not uh, totally aware about the context files and what is the um, uh, steps is there inside okay so uh, you can see that in the context file is a it's a major uh, configuration files and uh, each in every times you will uh, update some kind of you know, you know entry in the context file to make into effect you have to run the auto con configure you know auto config uh, otherwise uh, without the configure you know it could be done there are local uh, uh, component level uh, configuration files so if you don't want to run the auto config because without running the auto config context level parameter change doesn't take any effect but uh, uh, if you are uh, putting these changes on the uh, local component level and you just bounce a particular component it does have a effect but uh, but uh, you know uh, the what happens this particular uh, component uh, uh, configuration file does change uh, whenever somebody runs the auto config again because the auto config changes this particular uh, configuration files okay so each and every time the configuration auto config runs this configuration file local configuration file will be changed will be altered so keep in mind that 
so this is gonna take some maybe a uh, minute minute or two and i'll pause the video right now i'll come back once it's done just i want to show you uh, how does uh, the context file looks like so there is a variable you don't have to actually do that so if i do the variables echo the variables sorry so this is you can see that this is the path absolute path of the uh, context file of the run file system this is fs1 so if i'll open these things so here the lot of details are there like you know uh, uh, you can see that this is the uh, monitoring uh, url and then uh, that should be something called a wave entry protocol so these are the all the things like you know if you can see that uh, there are a lot of uh, the particular entries uh, we have uh, put enter and this has came here like you know host name external url web entry host web entry domain something like that okay now uh, as i said uh, now we have whatever we have done we have uh, installed the uh, um, the pre-installation ami uh, the image from the oracle we have uh, configured the whatever the post steps we have started the services now we have to log in for the logging purposes uh, okay one minute i'll just we have to use the some url how to use the url there is a table called uh, ICX parameters and there is a entry calls home URL from also we can get this particular entries from our uh, 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 context files so this we have to we can log in this URL should supposed to work okay but uh, before that it works it says the particular entry should be there in the etc host file otherwise it cannot know it should not it uh, cannot identify whether this what is there because there is no dns entries here so what i would need to do that um, i have to log in relogging as a root i have to go to the etc host and i have to make an entry put an entry the similarly the entries we earlier put through the scripts that is apps.example.com i have to make an entry here for this time i'll be using this public access because whenever i'll be trying from my laptop or my client computer the only uh, ip address will be the public ip address and this time uh, it should identify the same thing is as a cloud by dot training dot com because this is the url we are trying to access same things i'll be putting my etc host level you can see that i put the same thing that 193.122 at the cloud by dot uh, sorry here i have to change i believe uh, this is not the right entry okay i'll take the entry from here okay now the another thing is remaining uh, i am i am trying to access these things in a 8000 port this is the web entry host port so i have to check whether this 8000 port is allowed or not will it access i'll go to the networking then the virtual cloud networks then go to my vcn and uh, go to my uh, I'll be using this uh, database subnet 2 okay and using the default vCQuery list 
um, you can see that I am having a lot of entries for that so only the entries I am looking for here I already made an entry the TCP entries from all the uh, sources is going to that 8000 is allowed so I should able to uh, get the uh, URL now okay there is two URLs I can use for this purposes the one URL is this okay uh, as soon as I hit I already got the web page so you know the my uh, username is sysadmin and my simple password okay it's giving some kind of okay uh, some of the things if you uh, securing configurations things you can use it or not whatever I can say uh fix i'll try at least and then cancel okay if i cancel it will go out i have to maybe some other entries i have to do that okay so if i'll go for the unlock and then i say that ignore the security configurations warnings and proceed okay now you can see there are a lot of um, demo uh, responsibility this is the responsibilities and there are a lot of things um, is given these are the all response the major responsibilities these admin system administrators from there you can manage everything what's there inside maybe you can see that what is a system administrator what is the oracle application manager everything you can control from there what is the host what is uh, um, the log system alerts you can control here from uh, uh, concurrent users profile application install if you know this uh, e business suit the hell lot of stuff so you can do it from here mm -hmm.